If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. At that time, we kind of felt that the more stuff is in it, the better the painting is. But it really isn't that. That's kind of kindred to saying the more notes in a song, the better the song, or the more words in the book, the better the book. But that isn't true at all. It's not how many little things. It's, it's the melody. It's the theme. It's like a, the drumbeat and the rhythm of a painting. And I'm very much in tune with that. I'm Mary Pettis. I'm an artist and I'm at the Jacques Arts Center in Aiken, Minnesota. This is my artist reception for a solo exhibition that I have here. I live in Minnesota, and I'm from Taylor's Falls, living along the beautiful St. Croix River Valley, and I was drawn to the River Valley several decades ago because of the beauty of it. It reminded me of the Hudson River School, and I've done many, many paintings of the River Valley, and I continue to do that expanding now throughout Minnesota and also around the country. The greatest gift, I think, of being an artist, particularly painting out of doors or having my roots be an out of door painting and then trying to bring that into the studio, is that I go into a zone that kind of transcends my thinking. It feels to me like I'm making a connection with the spiritual aspect of my nature. So when I paint out of doors, I'm connecting with not just the stuff I'm looking at, but I truly do feel the roots of the trees and, and, sense, and the essence of the sense that I'm standing on the same ground that is nurturing those trees. And the moisture in the air is the water that I'm looking at when I'm painting, and I feel it on my skin. And I, I just, I become part of it, and we become one, and it's that... It's that profound connection that goes beyond thinking, that captivates me and continues to captivate me. And I try to bring that into my work, that going beyond the surface is, is I think, probably the single most thing, that connection to what lies beyond the surface is probably the most compelling aspect of what I do. So OK, let's, let's take a look at a couple of my favorites here. This painting is called Time Stands Still, which is what I named the exhibition after. And the painting is of a little corner of a pond that I painted numerous times. But I love this painting particularly because of the way that we travel through the painting. It symbolizes a lot of what I've come to uh, try to capture in my work at this stage of my development, and that is using oil paint as a medium, as a way to get us to become more introspective. And this painting, and to truly appreciate the beauty that surrounds us. As you look deeper in the painting, it takes us to deeper levels of relaxation. So it's kind of a mandala of sorts, and that's why I like this. This painting is called Waiting for the Light, and it's inspired from a pond that I painted dozens and dozens of times. I've watched many sunrises over that little pond. And there are different things that I love about this painting. Um, I wanted it to be classic in nature. One of the reasons why I bought the place is because of this very classic old soft maple cluster and, and the oak trees. And it it's, is reminiscent of of the Hudson River School and George Innes's work, which affected me greatly when I was a young artist. And so I thought, now that I was a better artist, I would like to try to put that kind of a feeling in, a, in this classic, a very balanced fulcrum-type composition. And it's very dark, but as the, as the light begins to spread up, up beyond, beyond the clouds, there's some backlighting. There's a lot of things that are happening in here, but the painting itself is very very somber, very relaxing, very slow moving uh, because of the tight values and because of the, the interplay. And then the composition is, is a very clean, simple composition without a lot of disruption. So there's a little backlighting on here. We're always drawn toward the light, which is off of the picture, um, evidence of the light here around this edge. But yet it's a very gentle edge, and so our eye moves very gently 
in and out of the painting. And then here too, we come in here, we wonder, there's a little fog that's lifting, which is the evidence of the movement, the clouds are moving, but everything is moving very slowly and it's, it's very much like a symphony. It is enveloping and unfolding really slowly, which is very relaxing. I also like about this painting that it has um, a wide variety of surface texture. One of my great teachers, Joe Wang, said, why oil paint? He couldn't speak English very well, but one of the, the first thing he said in the workshop is, why oil paint? And I came to think about that a lot, and um, I think that what it is uh, that attracts me to the medium of oil paint is that you can get a heavy impasto, and, and you can get glazes, and you can can I have thick paint and thin paint and show, you, show the brushwork and show a lot of emotion in, in a variety of ways. And the more that I paint, the more I come to understand that it's going to take many more decades before I really understand the potentials of this medium. When I am invited to the Maui Plenary Invitational, and I always tell them I'm from Minnesota, and they always feel so sorry for me. And I always tell them, uh, no, don't feel sorry for me. I love it. We embrace winter. And do you paint in the winter? Oh, yeah, I do that, but of course. And this is an example of a painting that I started on location. This is Minnehaha Falls in winter. And it's interesting. I have a painting in the exhibition that's Minnehaha Falls in, this, in early summer as well. Uh, which is a completely different feeling, but it's the same waterfall. This is a, a prominent waterfall in the Twin Cities area, and I loved the light. I tried to get there early in the morning when, when the sunlight would be bathing the, the entire basin, and it would be in snow, but I got there a little bit too late, and at first I was disappointed because I thought that, oh, I, shucks, I missed it. I missed the light, and I'll have to come back. But then I thought, well, I'll just begin the painting. And, and as often happens when we begin painting on location, the painting tells us how it wants to be painted. And the painting has a way of showing us the beauty where we might not have been looking for it, which is one of the things that I try to incorporate in all of my work, is letting, letting nature speak to us instead of trying to impose our will on it. This is a great example of that because I thought that it would be too dark because all there was were these couple streaks of light because the sun was too far over to the left. And, and then as I thought about it, I thought, oh, wow, that's a beautiful design of the, the sun raking across these icicles and, and then coming down toward us along the right side. So we move, and it's a very dramatic but different painting than I had set out to paint, which is one of the joys of painting on location. Well, the Jacques Art Center is an extraordinary building, and they've done an amazing job carrying on the spirit of the era, and I'm sure Francis Lee Jacques as well, who is from this area originally. I think one of the main functions of art is, and probably the art that I do too, that's based in and of the natural world, is I guess the comments here the most is, I go by that all the time, I see that all the time, or the, but, but I didn't realize it was so beautiful. And an artist's job, I think, is to render visible what we all see, but to show it in a new light and help us to look more closely and deeply at, at the beauty that surrounds us. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.